purpose does the gentlewoman from Florida seek recognition? House suspend the rules and agree to the bill HR 5577. The clerk will report the title of the bill. HR 5577, a bill to designate the facility of the United States Postal Service located at 3900 Crown Road Southwest in Atlanta, Georgia as the John R. Lewis Post Office Building. Pursuant to the rule, the gentlewoman from Florida, Ms. Wasserman Schultz, and the gentleman from Kansas, Mr. LeTurner, will each control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentlewoman from Florida. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days in which to revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous material on this measure. Without objection. And I yield my time, such time as I may consume. Gentlewoman is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise today in support of H.R. 5577 to designate the facility of the United States Postal Service located at 3900 Crown Road Southwest in Atlanta, Georgia, as the John R. Lewis Post Office Building. John Lewis was born on February 21, 1940 in Troy, Alabama, to Willie May and Eddie Lewis. Inspired by Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., he attended the American Baptist Theological Seminary in Nashville, Tennessee. Lewis then went on to earn his bachelor's degree in religion and philosophy from Fisk University. As a college student in Nashville, Congressman Lewis was a founder and chairman of the National Civil Rights Organization, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, or SNCC. In 1963, John Lewis was involved in planning the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom. As a part of the event, Lewis delivered a keynote address at the Lincoln Memorial in which he called on an army of movement activists to, quote, march through the South in a sustained campaign of nonviolent resistance to produce effective federal civil rights legislation and destroy Jim Crow. His fight for federal civil rights legislation continued in 1965 as Congressman Lewis participated in new voter registration drives and peaceful demonstrations in Selma, Alabama, where he sustained a fractured skull as a result of being beaten during what is now known as Bloody Sunday. President Jimmy Carter appointed Lewis as the Associate Director of the Federal Volunteer Agency Action, where he worked to build connections to local volunteer groups and diversify the agency's workforce. From 1981 to 1986, Congressman Lewis held a seat on the Atlanta City Council, where he tackled local issues such as public funding for infrastructure, zoning laws, and homelessness. As a representative of Georgia, Lewis made monumental strides as he focused on backing or introducing legislation advancing civil rights, environmental justice, education, and health care. In 1991, Lewis proposed legislation to establish the Museum of African American History and worked to gather support for the proposal until George W. Bush signed into law a bill creating the National Museum of African American History and Culture. Mr. Speaker, one of the greatest honors of my professional life uh, and really my life, was the opportunity to get to know and serve with the great John Lewis in this body. And I think if you asked most members who had the privilege of getting to know him and serve with him in the U.S. House of Representatives, that they would count among their finest honors to be able to have that privilege as well. Sadly, we lost Congressman Lewis, our beloved John, who died on July 17, 2020. And I encourage all of my colleagues to honor the, the memory of Congressman John Lewis's legacy and his fight for civil rights through the dedication of the post office at 3900 Crown Road Southwest as the John R. Lewis Post Office Building. And may his memory be for a blessing. And I reserve the balance of my time. The gentlewoman reserves. The gentleman from, gentleman from Kansas is recognized. I yield myself such time as I may consume. Gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today in strong support of H.R. 5577, which would name a post office after our former House colleague, John Robert Lewis. Besides being a long-term member of Congress, serving as Chief Deputy Whip in the 110th Congress, he is best known for his role as a leader of the Civil Rights Movement. His legacy is inspiring. He was the chairman of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee in the 1960s. He was one of the original Freedom Riders in 1961. In 1963, he helped organize the March on Washington, and in 1965, he led the first of three marches between Selma and Montgomery across the Edmund Pettus Bridge. There are few Americans as distinguished as John R. Lewis, and I am proud to support this bill. I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves the gentle lady from Florida is recognized. 
Mr. Speaker, I yield to the gentlelady from Georgia who has the privilege of having not stepped in the shoes, but to have succeeded the great former Congressman John Lewis. The gentlelady from Georgia for three minutes. Uh, the gentlelady is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I rise today in support of H.R. 5577, legislation that I introduced to rename the main post office on Crown Road in Atlanta after my mentor and predecessor, a friend to many of us, Congressman John Robert Lewis. Given the 5th Congressional District's main United States post office, Congressman Lewis's name is a proper, lasting tribute to the life of a civil rights hero. And to have the People's House take this bill up on the first day of Black History Month could not be more fitting. Congressman Lewis was a freedom rider, the youngest speaker at the 1963 March on Washington, a recipient of the Presidential Medal of Freedom and the conscience of the Congress. The sacrifices Congressman Lewis made paved the way for me to even stand before you today as a member of this body. He was a natural leader, and nearly two years after his passing, his mere memory has united over 360 co-sponsors to honor his life and legacy by designating the John Robert Lewis Postal Building. As I reflect on the power of, our, of over four-fifths of this body coming together to honor the life of Congressman Lewis, I can only imagine the good that we could do by coming together in the same numbers to advance what Congressman Lewis called the beloved community. The good we could do by standing together, fiercely defending the civil rights that Congressman Lewis put his life on the line for. The good that we could do if we all said something, did something, whenever we see that something isn't just right. The good that we could all do if we heeded the words in Congressman Lewis's final essay to answer the highest calling of your heart and stand up for what you truly believe. While it speaks volumes that so many of us have united to commemorate Congressman Lewis, it would shout to the heavens where Mr. Lewis could hear us if we united with the same energy and the spirit of justice and moral obligation. As we look at the trying times that our country is facing, let us not only honor Congressman Lewis with the post office, let us channel Congressman Lewis every day in Congress. Let's make sure today's passage of H.R. 5577 is only a starting point for our work ahead in his honor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I yield back. General lady from Florida is recognized. The general lady from Florida reserves. The gentleman from Kansas is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am pleased to yield three minutes to the gentleman from Georgia, Mr. Carter. The gentleman I, is recognized. I thank the gentleman for, for yielding. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to remember and to honor the life of the great John Lewis. I'm honored to have called Congressman Lewis a colleague and more, in friend, and more importantly, a friend. You know, Mr. Speaker, I have many fond memories of serving in Congress, but some of my fondest memories are walking from the Cannon Building over here to the Capitol with John Lewis. Here I am, this, this kid from South Georgia, walking with an icon over here to the Capitol. And we did it on many occasions. His office was a floor below mine when I was in the Cannon Building. I also cherish the time that he invited members of the Georgia delegation to his, to his home, and we had dinner that night. And he sat and he told us stories, stories of his experiences with Dr. King. I was proud to call John Lewis my friend. Like all of us in these halls, we can say that his wisdom, his spirit, and his friendship are deeply missed. But what can you say about John Lewis that hasn't already been said? He was a giant among men. He fiercely dedicated his life to fighting for equality and for justice for all. From his early days, fighting segregation in Nashville, to the Freedom Rides, to his service in the halls of Congress, John Lewis dedicated his life to a more perfect union. John Lewis never stopped. And now, more than ever, it is encouraging to be reminded of John's unyielding optimism 
and faith in the American dream. My hope is that today's bill will in a small way continue his legacy. The bill we are considering today would name Atlanta's central postal facility after this American hero. It's only appropriate to do so for a city shaped so much by Mr. Lewis. What's more, Mr. Speaker, I'm not sure if you've looked at the number of co-sponsors on this bill. If you count, this bill has an incredible 341 co-sponsors as of this morning. By my estimates, that makes it the most bipartisan bill that Congress has considered. And that's telling of John Lewis's legacy. I should note that this legislation has the support of Congressman Lewis's family, the John and Lillian Miles Lewis Foundation, as well as local Atlanta officials. Thank you to Representative Nakima Williams, who now represents Mr. Lewis's old district in Atlanta, for sponsoring this effort. As a Georgian, as a colleague, and as a friend, I'm especially honored to support this legislation and urge all of my colleagues to do the same, and I yield back. The gentlelady from Florida is recognized. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, at this time, I yield one minute to the distinguished gentleman from Rhode Island, a member of the Judiciary Committee who chairs the Antitrust, Commercial, and Administrative Law Subcommittee, Mr. Cicilline. Gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the gentlelady for yielding and giving me an opportunity to say a few words about our extraordinary colleague, the late John Lewis. Uh, John Lewis is someone who um, had such an enormous impact on this country, someone who risked his life, endured violence, intimidation, to help create a more beloved community and a better country. He was a gentleman who continued his fight for equality and justice and dignity for every single person in this country. Many of us had the privilege of crossing the Edmund Pettus Bridge with John Lewis, but for me what was particularly helpful and memorable is that John Lewis was a champion in the fight for LGBTQ equality and the Equality Act at a very critical moment. He became part of that effort, and I thought to myself, here's a man who's already done more than anyone could imagine one person can do for human dignity, for equality, for justice, and he was still in the fight for the LGBTQ community. One of the most extraordinary honors of my life is having served in, in Congress, but certainly having the friendship of the extraordinary John Lewis, someone who was beloved by everyone here, and I'll end with this. When I first met Mr. Lewis, he called me brother. And that went on for about six months, and I thought to myself, well, he doesn't mem remember my name. You know, that's just the way it is. But I soon learned that he called everyone brother and sister, because in John's heart, we were all part of a common family. And so this post office, I thank Congresswoman Nakiba Williams for her sponsorship, will be a permanent memorial to the extraordinary contributions of the life of John Lewis to our country. And with that, I thank the gentlelady, and I yield back. Gentleman, gentle lady reserves, the gentleman from Kansas is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I have no further speakers and I'm prepared to close. Uh, gentleman reserves, the gentle lady from Florida is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, uh, as I said, there are so many, really nearly all of the members of this body that had the privilege to get to know Congressman Lewis would count among their finest honors the chance to serve in this esteemed institution with him. He was really the embodiment of goodness. John Lewis was someone who I never heard cast aspersions, who I never saw angry or anger directed at someone else. He certainly had anger towards injustice. And, and really channeled that energy and his, his passion to make sure that everyone in the United States had an opportunity to live and experience justice as his life's work. There were so many times that John's rallying cry for members of this institution was that we needed to stand up and speak out and make sure that we did not remain silent. That is absolutely essential and is, is as important today 
as it was back in the 1960s and before that, when he was walking uh, across the Edmund Pettus Bridge and leading the fight for voting rights. And we carry on that fight for him to this day in his memory. And now, now, Mr. Speaker, I have the privilege of yielding one minute to the gentlewoman from California, the distinguished speaker of the United States House of Representatives, the Honorable Nancy Pelosi. The gentlelady is recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I thank the gentlewoman for yielding. Thank you, Madam Chair, for bringing this important legislation to the floor of the House in such a bipartisan way. Uh, I rise today in support of legislation to honor the leadership and legacy of Congressman John Robert Lewis. Being from Georgia, presiding, uh, it's, it makes it very special to all of us. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. I do so officially, and I do so personally. Uh, as our beloved John Lewis was the conscience of the Congress and a dear friend to many of us who served with him. I came in with the same class as John Lewis, so I served with him for decades and had the benefit of seeing up close and personal on a daily basis his, the special nature of this man. Let us salute Congresswoman Nakina Williams, who has the awesome privilege of serving on John Lewis's st uh, in that seat in uh, Georgia for her committed leadership in making this legislation possible. John Lewis was a titan of the civil rights movement, we all know that, a moral giant on Capitol Hill and in the country, and a hero of American history who transformed our nation with his vision, his persistence, and his courage. Uh, John offered our nation a clarion voice for freedom and justice, from lunch counters in Nashville to Edmund Pettus Bridge, and Selma from the steps of the Lincoln Memorial to the floor of the House. On the floor of the House, he led a, a, a demonstration in support of gun violence prevention uh, that was historic. His extraordinary sacrifice, indomitable spirit, and endless generosity in the face of an unimaginable adversity uh, made him revered in both houses of the Congress, on both sides of the aisle, and across the country. It was my solemn honor to welcome John back to the Capitol a final time in July 20th, July in state. Then in July 2021, I had the great privilege of leading a congressional delegation to San Diego to christen the formidable USNS John Lewis, U.S. Navy, and the, John Lewis. Today, we again honor him by affixing his name upon the post office in the heart of his be beloved Atlanta, another fitting tribute that will inspire, inspire uh, generations of Georgians. And it's appropriate we do so as Americans across the nation mark the beginning of Black History Month this very day, February. And we do so, let us pledge to continue to carry on John's mission to strive for a more perfect union and to work to build a world worthy of John Lewis's legacy. And if I may, Mr. Speaker, I would like to also uh, proudly honor a pioneering spirit, a friend of John Lewis, a progressive champion, a dear friend of so many of us, Congresswoman Lynn Woolsey, with legislation to rename the Petaluma Downtown Post Office in her honor, which I'm proud to co-sponsor as a Californian. We pay a proper tribute to an inspiring leader, has improved the lives of countless working families in the Bay Area and beyond. Thank Congressman Sherrod Hoffman for his committed leadership to bring this legislation to the floor and to be for carrying on a great legacy that he and uh, Lynn Wolsey shared of leadership on behalf of the families of the North Bay. I just want to, though, say uh, that her two decades in the House on education and labor and a, and a co-chair of the Progressive Caucus, she was a leader on welfare reform in the 90s, opposing the war in Iraq since day one, working uh, relentlessly on gender discrimination, ending gender discrimination, championing fervently the environment, and again, bravely protesting the genocide in Darfur. So the Congress will salute her instrumental leadership in establishing, she was one of the leaders who established Women's History Month, an important tradition allowing us to pay homage to many extraordinary women on whose shoulders we all stand. So for this, for two reasons I come to the floor, of course, one to share and 
honoring John Lewis for the naming of post office and to honor Lynn Woolsey. I hope we have a strong bipartisan eye in both cases. Thank you again, uh, Madam Chair, Wasserman Schultz, uh, for giving, affording this opportunity to speak on behalf of two great champions of the Congress. With that, I urge an I vote and yield back the balance of my time. Thank you. Gentlewoman from Florida reserves. The gentleman from Kansas is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I'm, I'm prepared to close. Gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I support this bill and yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields. The gentleman from, gentlewoman from Florida is recognized. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, we have no further speakers as well, and I'm prepared to close. And I, I will say that uh, it is an incredible privilege to be able to manage the time on this legislation to name the main post office in the city of Atlanta after the great and late 